Hi, Chad Heinlein here today with Versamatic Pump Company. Today we're going to do a wet side rebuild of our E1 metallic pump with a metal center. Here we have our wet end rebuild kit and our air end rebuild kit for our E1 metallic with a metal center pump. The rebuild you are going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any part of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. For somatic genuine replacement parts, wet end and air end kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals and more information, visit us on the web at www.versamatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rump video on safety at versamatic.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of the parts and components during the rebuild. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, o-ring pick, snap ring pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 3 fourths inch, 532nds inch socket head allen wrench. Let's get started. For video purposes, we're going to use a 3 8 drive impact gun. First, we're going to remove the discharge manifold. Remove the discharge manifold and set aside for later reassembly. Remove the discharge check balls and discard and remove the discharge valve seats and discard the valve seat o-rings. Now we're going to remove the air valve assembly. Now remove the old gasket and valve insert and valve diverter. Now remove the suction manifold. Go ahead and set aside the suction manifold for later reassembly. Turn the pump upside down, remove the suction valve seats, discard the valve seat o-rings. Remove the discharge check balls and discard. Now remove one outer chamber. and set aside for later reassembly. Leave one water chamber on and we're ready to remove the opposite diaphragm assembly. Here we have the diaphragm assembly with the diaphragm rod set aside and remove the opposite outer chamber. 
Once the outer chamber is removed, set aside for later reassembly, and remove the second diaphragm assembly. Now we're ready to install our wedding kit. Open the wedding kit and lay out components for rebuild purposes. Versamatic shafts have wrench flats on the rod to assist in diaphragm removal and installation when performing maintenance in the field. Today we will use a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while the shaft is clamped in the vise. Go ahead and snug up our diaphragm rod and remove the old diaphragm assembly. Discard the old diaphragm. Inspect the diaphragm rod for any scars nicks or scratches and replace as needed. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Note the orientation of our diaphragm. It does note fluid side. Install our outer plate in the correct orientation of the diaphragm. Inspect the inner diaphragm plate and note the orientation of the radius towards the diaphragm. Torque the diaphragm assembly to the rod according to factory specifications listed in the service manual. Now we can install grease on the diaphragm rod to prevent the items from catching, binding, or cutting the main shaft o-ring. Position the diaphragm so it lines up with all the bolt holes. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine surfaces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratching, or material buildup can be cleaned up using emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. Once the bolt holes are aligned, begin to install our outer chamber bolts. Tighten bolts evenly in a crossing pattern and torque to the recommendations called out in the service and operating manual. Now we're ready to install our second diaphragm assembly. Install the outer plate where it notes fluid side. And also inspect your inner plate and ensure that you have the radius of the inner plate towards the diaphragm. Torque the diaphragm assembly. If you achieve torque with the bolt holes on the diaphragm assembly between holes, always go forward to the next hole, never back off. As you can see here, we're not completely lined up with our bolt holes, so we need to go forward to make sure we are lined up with all bolt holes within our center section. Once the bolt holes are aligned, we're now ready to install our outer chamber, inspect the machine surfaces, the radius of the outer chamber. Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. When tightening the bolts on the outer chamber, tighten in a cross pattern and torque to factory specifications. Now we're ready to install our suction manifold. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring, damage, or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Install our suction side check balls. Inspect the valve seats for any wear. Replace as needed. Note the orientation you want the O-ring groove to face towards the suction manifold. Install our valve seat O-ring. Make sure it's completely installed within the O-ring groove. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. 
align the bolt holes of the outer chambers to the suction manifold and torque the bolts in a cross pattern. Now install our valve insert. Make sure the cut portion of the valve insert is facing towards our ceramic valve diverter. The valve insert can go only go one way. Note the notch in the air valve body and the valve insert. Now install our air valve gasket. It is marked with valve side. It goes towards the air valve body. Be sure to align the bolt holes on the air valve body with the center section of the pump. The air valve inlet will face away from the exhaust port on the center section of the pump. Be sure to torque the air valve bolts to factory specifications. Now we're ready to install and inspect our machine surfaces on our discharge manifold. Inspect the ball cage. Ensure there's no sharp edges. Clean up as needed. Now install our discharge valve seats. Inspect for any wear or nicks, scratches. Replace as needed. Note the orientation of our valve seats. The O-ring groove faces towards the discharge manifold. Install our valve seat O-rings and our discharge check balls. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Tighten bolts evenly in a crossing pattern and torque to the recommendations called out in the service and operating manual. This concludes our rebuild of our wet side for an E1 metallic metal center pump. When doing a complete rebuild, see our air side video or for more information, visit us on the web at versamatic.com or after sales support at service.versamatic at idexcorp.com. Thank you.